It was the end of an era on the West End tonight, or was it? Welcome back to the frenzy. John Popovich with Kane and Singleton, and you got to spend part of the evening at a Cincinnati landmark. I sure did, John. Now, some say it was rain. I think maybe it was tears from heaven. Jason Stargle and family on hand for the final CPS game at Stargle Stadium. Now, I hope you aren't tired of coverage of these senatorial races because Taft was often running against Aiken. Recall more attacks and adds yards after the contact there. Now get used to the name DeMarco Bradley for at least the next couple months. Not only a talented football player, but also a standout basketball player. Pulls down the quarterback there, and then he shows his offensive skills. Turns the short catch into a touchdown run, and it was 14-0 Taft in the first quarter. Later in the half, it's Bradley on the handoff, and Taft is keeping the lights on on at Stargill at least for another week with the 28-8 win. More on where Taft will land in the Division Four pitcher later on to northern Kentucky Campbell County at unbeaten cup calf in Park Hills tonight could the camels do what no one else has done to cup calf in two seasons beat them sure didn't look like it from the start Caleb Jacob pretty pass in the rain downfield to Jack cold iron big pickup on that play then later on in the drive Casey McGinnis gets the handoff he gets the blocking the Colonels are on the board first Campbell County tried to respond through the air but this pass gets intercepted by Jackson Blank. He makes the pick and well, he does a pretty good job bringing it back about 20 yards as well. Hard to win when you give Cuffcath those opportunities. The weather didn't affect their passing game too much. Jacob the tight end Michael Mayer this time. The Colonels are down inside the 20 yard line and then they called on Jacob Scrivener to finish the drive this time all Cuffcath. They went at 28 nothing to finish another undefeated regular season. All right to St. Leon Indiana East Central St. South Dearborn over under 10 points for the winner. That's a question mark and that's a tease to the second quarter. The Knights started at their one yard line on this drive. Adam Dixon is about to get them into the red zone. His pass to Chance Sparinger lands him inside the 10. Now same drive now from the one yard line and Dixon will score the only touchdown in this game by either squad and it was 7 0 South Dearborn. That would be the score at halftime. Now the Trojans did a good job of moving the ball until they got to the red zone. So they'd rely on Caden Browndike, the senior kicker, missed his first, but he puts this one through 7-3. He tack on another Trojans down one and with 10 seconds to go, it's Browndike hitting the game winner. Cue the celebration. East Central survives and advances 9-7, the winner. Okay, finally, Lawrenceburg went to Batesville in round two of the Indiana sectionals. Sloppy Heidlidge. night in Bulldog country, but Trey Heidlidge drilled in in the third quarter, and the Bulldogs led this one 21-6. That changed early in the fourth. Garrett Yoon found enough room around the left side, just inside the pylon, and a two-point conversion, 21-14. This was the backbreaker moments later. The quick handoff up the middle for Batesville, and Austin Pullman quickly into the clear. 53 yards for the touchdown. It was a 14-point game again. Lawrenceburg kept putting up a fight. They drove the ball up the field, and on a fourth and goal, Brendan Cox got it over. A two-point conversion made it a six-point game, but the field was long and the time was short. When the Tigers got the ball back, their last try was intercepted. Batesville moves to the sectional finals with a 28-22 win tonight.